Hey guys, it's Lily Pad Polish and today's a little bit of a different video as you guys can see. My face is not usually in these videos. However, I'm going to be doing a sort of Q&A video based off of a stamping video that I did actually over three years ago at this point. But I really wanted to do this video because it's my most popular video on this channel and I got so many questions in regards to stamping and how to stamp because I know that a lot of you guys have found me off of that video so I have so many questions in the comments section of that video that I decided that I would do a whole video addressing a lot of those questions and addressing a lot of the things that I maybe didn't mention in that video previously I was originally going to be doing a sort of revamped version of that video just because as I said that video is really old and honestly I really kind of low-key cringe when I watch it because I just made it so long ago and I feel like if I were to do it today it would be a totally different video but I did re-watch it and I feel like a lot of the tips and tricks that I mentioned in that video is still things that I do today so I feel like the actual content and sort of the tips that I give you in that video would be relatively the same. It would just be filmed differently. So I didn't want to make a whole other video where I was just repeating what I said in that last one. So I figured that I would just do this video where I was answering a lot of your questions if you were still confused about something after watching that video and then also addressing some of the things that I may not have mentioned in that video and sort of clear things up if you still have some questions and some difficulties when it comes to nail art stamping. So I have a list of questions here from that comment section and I'm going to be talking about them today. <laughs> So the first question is actually not really a question, but I saw a lot of comments talking about how the links in the description box of that video don't work. And the majority of the products that I used in that video and the majority of the stamping products that I own is from Bundle Monster, which I have linked in the description box. However, Bundle Monster actually changed their name to Maniology, and I have not updated those links. However, they should be updated by the time this video goes up. I will definitely go back and change those links because they are no longer Bundle Monster, which is why those links don't work. And I know a lot of you guys have also tried looking up Bundle Monster and couldn't find anything. And again, that's just because they changed their name. So hopefully I'll be able to update those links before this video even comes out. So it should be all good now. And then to add on to that, a lot of the products that I mentioned in that video, particularly the deluxe kit that I mentioned towards the end of the video, it's actually something that they don't sell anymore, unfortunately, which kind of sucks because it was a really good kit, especially for starters or for beginners that are new to stamping. I'm pretty sure they don't sell that anymore, so I'll probably just remove that from the description box altogether. But yeah, Bundle Monster is now Maniology. And then probably one of the most commonly asked questions in that video is if normal polishes work. So basically if you have to use a stamping polish or if you can just use regular polishes. And this is actually something that I did mention in that video. But I do understand because that video is so long that a lot of people probably just missed it because it is towards the end of that video and I'm pretty sure that video is like 20 minutes long. But yes, I believe it's at 13 minutes and 10 seconds is when I go through all of that and sort of show you how stamping works with regular polish. So I show you Essie Polish, China Glaze, OPI, and a Sally Hansen polish I believe. So yeah, I think I mentioned it in that video as well that not all regular polishes will work, but I've definitely used regular polishes that aren't meant for stamping and they've worked just fine. I feel like it just depends. You have to look at the consistency and they definitely do have to be on the more pigmented side so like OPI polishes their cream polishes are typically really good for stamping in my opinion but if you have like a nail polish that you just really like and you can't find it in a stamping version definitely just try it it's just trial and error I always do that myself and if it doesn't work then you know that 
it's not really good for stamping but obviously stamping polishes are always going to be better because that's what they're meant to do they're meant to be thick and sort of more pigmented so that your image is brighter and more crisp but yeah you can definitely use regular polishes you just have to see the consistency of it and just try it out and see if it works and then similar to that last question is if gel polishes work so the answer to that is no um so upon further research apparently you actually can stamp with gel polish technically however it is a lot more difficult to do that just because as i'm about to say in this video gel polish obviously doesn't dry like nail polish does so it does still come out very smudgy um but technically you can stamp with gel polish it just doesn't come out as good in my opinion as it would with a regular or a stamping polish so because you have to cure gel polish gel polish doesn't ever dry and the reason why regular polish works for stamping is because it does dry and when it's sort of in the crevices of the image or in the engraving I guess it sort of dries in there which is why you're able to pick it up with the stamp and why you get the image on your stamper so because gel polish doesn't dry it's not going to do that it's just going to be all smeared however you can obviously stamp with regular polish or with stamping polish over a gel manicure so if your like base color is gel you can definitely stamp over it just make sure that your base is a little bit tacky so that you have a better chance of having your image stick to your nail if it's going on a really glossy base like if you already have a completed gel manicure with a top coat and everything you might have a little bit of trouble having your image stick onto the nail and I usually use the yellow stopper polish because it dries sort of tacky and then this next question says I got a plate of Salon Express but the plate designs are not much deep so that the nail polish could stay so what should I do so I believe you're talking about the actual engraving. So this is something that I did mention in that previous stamping video, that a lot of the times your stamping plates, if they aren't good quality, then a lot of the times the etching in the stamping image might not be perfect. So if that's something that you notice, you're just gonna have to get a new stamping plate because it's just not going to work. There's just no way of getting around that if your stamping plate is the problem. So then another question is how does one clean the stamper? I have one from Walmart Queen and I tried to clean unstamped polish off with a cotton ball and polish remover but it got all fuzzy and now I can't clean it. So this is something that I really regret not putting in that video because this makes me so sad. You're not supposed to use nail polish remover or any type of acetone on your stamper because you basically just ruined it. There's no way of sort of recovering your stamper from nail polish remover. The way that I clean it is I usually just use some tape or you can use a lint roller and that's basically the only way that I clean it. So yeah, definitely never use nail polish remover so another question says may I ask where you got your polish practice mat so my nail mat is actually from twinkle tea I love it so much it's the twinkle tea glamour mat I believe it's so nice it even has a little cup that you can like pop up it's amazing I 10 out of 10 recommend and I'll leave it linked down below of this video and I'll try to remember to leave it also in that old video as well so another comment that I saw is actually not a question, but it mentions something really important that I didn't mention in my video, which is priming your stamper. So the reason why I originally didn't include it in that video is because I personally haven't really found the need to prime any of my stampers. Usually I just use some tape or again a lint roller just to clean off any like dust or lint off of the stamper since they're usually really sticky and everything sticks to them but other than that I don't like wash them or anything the only one that I've had to do it for is the bundle monster or maniology mochi stamper I believe which is like the huge one and that's the only time that I've had to sort of prime it and I just used a buffer for that but other than that I haven't found the need to prime any of my other stampers just like the regular tiny ones so yeah but definitely prime your stamper if that's something 
something that you think might be causing the problem, you can wash it, use a buffer, or anything like that. I've also heard that the Magic Eraser works really well for that, but I've personally never used it, but that's something that you might want to try if that's something that you think is causing the issue with your stamper. So another one that isn't a question, but I did want to mention is the film that comes over stamping plates. So in that previous video, I showed you a Bundle Monster Now Maniology stamping plate and they always come with a blue film. However, I didn't mention in that video that a lot of stamping plates actually have a clear film. I specifically said blue in that video just because I've only had stamping plates that had a blue film on it but some of them are clear so definitely check prior to stamping if your stamping plate is brand new if there's a film on it and it might be clear you just can't see it so definitely check for that so next i have a question about born pretty store products i have a lot of comments in that video about other brands and honestly i haven't really used that many other brands aside from bundle monster or maniology i don't really stray too far from that just because i know that i like it and i haven't tried many other brands i have tried beauty big bang i have a couple of videos using their stamping plates which i really really like but other than that i can't think of of too many other brands that I've tried just because I really like the Maniology stamping plates that I have but if you would like me to do like a video or a review video on Born Pretty Store products or any other brand that you might be interested in trying out I can definitely do that for you and then another question is actually one that I just answered which is do you suggest Beauty Big Bang stamping plates or can you please test it and let me know if it's good quality. So I actually have tested a lot of Beauty Big Bang's stamping plates. I have, as I said before, a couple of videos on it and they are really good. So if you're interested in trying those out, I would definitely recommend it because I think that they're really good. I haven't tried out any of their stampers. I just have tried their stamping plates and in my opinion, they're really good quality and I never have any issues with it. So another question is talking about how they're having trouble getting the nail polish off of the plate. So this is another thing that I forgot to address in that video. I don't know how that video is like 20 minutes long and I still forgot to mention things, but I always use 100% acetone to remove the polish off of the stamping plate. Using 100% acetone is usually a little bit easier than just using regular nail polish remover because it's just harsher. So I definitely recommend doing that and they even say sell um, little cotton ball clampers so that you don't mess up your manicure when you're trying to clean it up and I recommend cleaning your stamper after every image I never go over it more than once just because usually I feel like the nail polish sort of hardens up in the image and then it's sort of harder to pick up so another thing that I saw in the comments was someone addressing the temperature of the room, which is something that I hadn't even thought about before reading that comment. But someone did mention that they had their ceiling fan on so it was cooler, which made the nail polish in like the stamping plate dry a lot faster, which made it harder for the stamp to pick it up because it dried too quickly. So that's definitely really interesting. I didn't think about it at all, but it does make makes sense that if you have like a fan around that it would dry out your polish therefore making it harder to pick up and I have seen people saying that they like heat up their stamping plate prior to stamping so that their nail polish doesn't dry up as fast and they're able to pick up the image so I just wanted to mention that because I feel like that's really interesting and if you're just desperate and wanting to try something because your stamper just doesn't work maybe try warming up your stamping plate or getting rid of any fans that you have on and then again this question is asking how I clean my stamper so I basically like I said before do not use nail polish remover I use tape or a lint roller and that's just the only way that I clean my stamper it's the same thing that I do once it's brand new and out of the packaging I use either tape or a lint roller just to get any dust or lint off of the stamper you want to work with a stamper that is 100% clean with no debris or residue of anything on 
on the head of your stamper and that's how you're going to get the crispest image. So this question is asking what the best stamping polish is. So like I said before, I haven't used a large variety of different stamping products. I do really like the stamping polish that I have from Maniology. And I will say that I hear a lot of good things about Twinkle T's stamping polish, but I personally haven't used them, so I can't say. But Maniology's stamping polish are always really nice. And I actually really like Queen's stamping polish polish as well. So then this next question says, do I really need to purchase or use nail polish stampers? So I believe you mean like the, sta the head stamper that you pick up the image with. I can't imagine or think of anything else that you would be able to pick up the image with. So you definitely do need stampers to pick up the image off of a stamping plate. And those are all of the questions that I have for today's video. I hope that you guys found it helpful if you were still struggling with stamping. I know that a lot of you guys who have found my channel and subscribed to me found me from that video. And thank you so much for sticking around. I really appreciate it. But I decided to do this video because I feel like I don't create a whole ton of stamping content anymore. So I decided that I'd throw this video in just because I do get a lot of questions off of that video. So hopefully this cleared some things up and as always comment down below if you have any other questions that I didn't address in today's video or in my video from three years ago and I'll definitely try to answer that in the comments of this video but that's basically all for today's video I really hope that you guys enjoyed it I know that it's a little bit different than my usual nail tutorial where my face is not in the video but I felt like it was more appropriate for me to just hop on here with my face to answer some of these questions and hopefully you guys enjoyed this type of video but yeah thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one bye sneak peek and those are all of the questions mm. ew <clears throat>